Hey, what's up everyone? We're here in the Dammobile. Welcome. Uh, I won't show you around because it's tiny and uh, an absolute shit heap in here. Um, but as the title suggests, we're going to talk about Brexit. Now, it looks like we're going to be heading towards a no-deal Brexit. Uh, so there's no deal on either side. Um, really, it is the only outcome. Uh, given It's either a shit deal or, or no deal. Now, the shit deal was never ever going to pass Parliament. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't pass it either. Uh, so it looks like no deal, and that's what we're gearing up for. Now you'll read sort of here and there. I know. Um, uh, I read yesterday actually that uh, the uh, Westminster is talking about no, it's the EU that's going after the no deal. I'm sure the EU thinks that it's, it's Britain going after the no deal. Uh, yeah, but it's it's a shit show on either side. It's going to be no deal. Um, so we're going to brace ourselves for that. Now. It's funny because all the people lamenting a no deal seem to be forgetting that the rest of the world does exist. Uh, we can form trade deals with the other with other regions of the world. We have the, you know, Britain's in quite a good good spot actually, considering I wouldn't want to see any other EU state try and leave. Britain leaving, we have the Commonwealth, so Australia's about New Zealand, India, Pakistan, um, Canada, South Africa, Nigeria. All countries with emerging or, or, or decent economies that I'm sure we could uh, we could set up free trade deals with. The US as well is a huge one. The US seems to be lining up to uh, offer us deals. But I, I'm not sure if anyone else has, th has thought this, but there seems to be some semblance of, of sabotage almost uh, from, our, well, from, from the UK side of things. Uh, when it comes to tr uh, forming trade deals with the US, um, I'm not sure about any other countries, but particularly with the US. So whether it's the chlorinated chicken that I mentioned before, where you know, the government immediately shuts it down, so we're not going to have any of this, don't even think about it. Uh, or that whole sort of bullshit with the, with the UK ambassador to America last week, where he, these emails came out, uh, or it was, it was released, uh, some emails that he'd spoken. Uh, sorry, I'll start again. Some emails that came out, uh, or that were leaked, from the ambassador, talking about how inept the Trump um, administration is, how poor Trump is in general, the usual kind of bullshit that we hear. Uh, obviously, I don't believe a word of it. Um, but the, the, the timing was was suspect. It's a little bit suspicious. The timing, right when we're about to launch or try and launch um, talks to set up a trade deal with the U.S., this stuff comes out, which was you know potentially going to harm our relationship with that country. Uh, yeah, suspicious. I'm not so sure. And with that in mind, I think you have to look at anybody who has holdings outside of the United Kingdom. So a, a British-born uh, businessman who has holdings within the EU, where the majority of their money is being kept within the EU or within sort of European interests. Uh, if they hold any sort of power in Westminster or as part of some activist group, as part of some giant lobby group, get rid of them. You have to, they are not fit um, for purpose, in my opinion. They are inc incredibly, incredibly biased. Uh, you know, think about it, we're all the same. We're all going to look after, our, we're looking after number one first. We're going to look after our money, after, after our wallets. Uh, you, know, you can sound as virtuous as you like. That's what's going to happen, unfortunately. Um, and I think those, those sort of people will probably be the ones who who leave the inevitable downturn in the economy once we leave the EU. Uh, I don't think it necessarily has to be as bad as it is, um, but it probably will be because people who have their money and their other holdings within, within the European Union will make it so. They'll fuck the rest of us um, to try and prove a point, as will the EU. Now, can a deal be salvaged? Mm, it's unlikely. I think I think a no deal is, is the only way now. Now, what Theresa May should have done, because I think she's the one who kind of fucked it for all of us, uh, I don't think in a malicious way either. I think Theresa May did actually want to deliver Brexit. I just think she was completely inept. Um, a nice woman, but not again, not fit for purpose. What she should have done and what Boris could do uh, is go to the EU, go to Juncker, Go to these guys and say, look, we already trade at the EU uh, to EU regulations, to EU standards. 
all of our products that we trade with you, uh, that we export to you, are up to your standard. Now, we're happy to continue to keep it that way. Um, to any sort of any exports to the EU will be up to EU standard. You have our guarantee. You can check them. There's no need to change anything. We're not going to change anything. So, what's the problem? You know, if you want to tariff us, if you want to set up a, 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 a tariff on there, then fine. But within a few years, hopefully, we'll have, uh, we'll have overtaken the EU. We, our economy should be looking uh, you know, have an initial rocky road to start with, but eventually should be going up uh, sort of an upwards traje uh, trajectory. Whereas the EU will eventually start to slide down, given you know, you, sort of how bloated and how inefficient it is. Um, and as with all sort of socialist economies and uh, with lots of public spending, it tends to fall flat on its face. Now, with that in mind, I think some, as we are going to be leaving the EU and uh, without a trade deal, I think we should be looking at perhaps talking to some of these countries uh, which are a little bit Eurosceptic, so Hungary with Viktor Orban over there, Italy, um, I can't remember what the chap's name is, Salvini, I think it is, the, 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 the deputy over there, so Italy, Spain, I know uh, France has a growing Eurosceptic movement, um, but particularly Eastern Europe and, uh, and Italy at the moment, so this is how the EU is treating us when we want to leave. They when you're in the EU, you get shafted, and at, when you try and leave the EU, you get shafted even harder. Um, you know, we've got unfettered immigration, lack of jobs, and this immigration, by the way, you know, they can sound again, as virtuous as they like and talk about uh, you know, talking about EU uh, EU state members and people who are pro EU talk about how virtuous and how generous they are by opening, flinging open the doors for these for these migrants. This is a load of shit. The actual genuine immigrants who are coming from war-torn countries tend to be from countries which the EU itself has fucked over, along with the US, um, whether that's France or the UK. We go in, we bomb them out, and then open the doors and say, yeah, come on in. Do you not see a potential issue with that? Because uh, I do. Then these immigrants it's difficult to sound uh, to not sound a little bit bigoted when you talk about it. But uh, again, I'm I'm pro immigration as long as it's done the right way. Huge swathes of people flooding into the state. Oh, it's not quite a state yet, thankfully, but uh, into the continent is not a good way of going about it. All it is is cheap, cheap labour. The EU doesn't care about these people. If they did, they wouldn't fucking bomb them out in the first place. It's cheap labour. All it does is seek to divide the existing population and, yeah, to fuck us over with jobs. And if it wasn't the case, you wouldn't have a 30, I think it's a 30 billion dollar industry off Libya, where immigrants, or so-called immigrants, let's call them, we'll call them migrants, here we are. So migrants are shipped a mile, if that, off the coast of Libya, and then a, 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 an NGO a ship belonging to an NGO goes and picks them up, takes them into Europe, up to Italy, where I think they're actually getting stopped every now and then. Um, but basically into into Europe and then released, and off they go, you know, to find well to a state like France or Germany or Sweden or the UK, where they're going to get the handouts. You're not really going to go stop in fucking I don't know, Albania, are you really? I mean, I've been to Albania, and uh, no offence, but. It's not quite, uh... actually no, fuck that, yeah. Personally, I would rather move to Albania, but um, these people aren't going to get any handouts in Albania, so there we are. Um, so yeah, I would say that to you, that they're trying to fuck you over, they're already fucking over, jobs are going. Uh, and particularly if you live in, you're living in a country like Greece, or sort of on the, on the fringes of the EU, with a, perhaps not as strong an economy as Germany, you are going to get fucked. Um, when the EU eventually um, decides to you know, become the super state that it wants to be and you're living in Greece or you're living in basically anywhere but Germany you will become the, the, the potato patch uh, and as with all commies everywhere they will soon realize oh shit 
hang on, we're not the ones in power, we're farming potatoes along with the rest of them. Um, the UK was right to leave. Now, yeah, I think it, it, it's going to be a no deal. We have to brace ourselves. It's going to be a bit shit to begin with, um, and probably for a few months, uh, which bodes well for me, given that my, my job is probably going to go, uh, but we'll see. And uh, it's coming up to Christmas, uh, so it's going to be a shit Christmas, but, hey man, Brexit should be the best gift this country has ever received. Um, but maybe it's a bit rocky to start with, I imagine. Now, just a few parting words on Boris, because someone asked me about him, uh, about my thoughts to do with Boris, because I haven't really touched on it before. Uh, I'm, sl I'm semi-optimistic semi when it comes to Boris Johnson. Uh, in comparison with Theresa May, I mean, there, there is no comparison. I would choose Boris any day of the week, but it's, n it's not a particularly great choice. Now, there are a couple of red flags uh, for me with Boris. When he talks about amnesty for the hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants in this country, mm, no thank you. Uh, like I said, it, I'm not against immigration if you do it the right way, and if you are an illegal immigrant to this country, but, you know, you were a child when you were brought here, you had no choice in the matter. You were brought, uh, brought up here, raised here, educated here. I don't particularly have a problem, um, although a lot of the time uh, when that does happen, and uh, they are uh, immigrants are raised and educated here, they're not necessarily raised and educated in an integrated community, uh, community uh, or taught many British values, or anything like that. So, yeah, that could be a tricky one. It might be, I mean, you honestly, you might have to go through that on a on a person by person basis, which would take fucking forever. Um, so yeah, it's hard to see how that one can be done efficiently. Uh, as for that, uh, other than that, though, if you've come here illegally and you're on any sort of government handout, any sort of government uh, benefit or housing scheme, you can get fucked. Go back to where you came from. I'm sorry, uh, although I'm not that sorry. Um, yeah. yeah unfortunately and come here the right try and come here the right way um, and, and I, I mean I honestly don't mind guarding amnesty actually to uh, if you're an illegal immigrant and you've, you've been working here in the UK for however long uh, as long as you can pay your back taxes I'm actually all right with you staying I have no problem particularly if you've, if you've learned the language and you made some sort of effort if you can pay those taxes back then then by all means um, yeah have a seat uh, but yeah, that's a bit of a red flag for me, uh, in all honesty. Uh, the second red flag was when he's talking about increases to public spending, whether it's HS2 or just in general, get, you know, get more police on the street or in general. Spend, 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 spend. That's not a conservative position, Boris. Like, come on, man. Yeah, you do. When will this government get it in its head to stop spending money? Honestly, I don't mind if you want to borrow. I do mind, but if the government's going to borrow money, they should borrow up to a thousand pounds per head. Other than that, spend what they make, and yeah, Jesus, it's, it's difficult. Like, just stop fucking spending money, dude. Please, we don't have the money. All the, we're the ones who have to fund this, and we're going to get fucked in a, uh, in a few months. So yeah, let's stop that, please. Now, other than that, hey, you're right. Uh, yeah, sorry, neighbours just turned up. Uh, other than that, I think it's going to be, yeah, should, I, I have reasons for optimism with Boris. Now, what I said about with the, the public spending, he does have um, some members of, I forget what they're called, the Taxpayer Alliance. Uh, he's brought to the fore, uh, brought up to the government, which is a good thing. There's a, some level of accountability there. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good thing. Also... Uh, so also he's um what else has he done yeah that's probably about it i mean oh yeah sorry uh yeah uh bringing people like jacob Brees smog to the fore bringing him so he's her head of the home office i believe uh or head of the house of commons one of them either way i believe uh getting jacob Brees smog to the fore bring him to the front of the party is a good thing he's got some good ideas yes. Uh, I know he's not for everyone, and people sort of look at him and, as a bit snobby, or a bit, you know, classist, maybe. Uh, but you actually, 
listening to what Jacob Rees-Mogg has to say, he's not really any of that. I believe he, he, he does want the best for the British people. Uh, whether you're living in, I don't know, you're living in southwest London in some nice area or, I don't know, fucking Skegness. No offense to anyone in Skegness, but it's fucking Skegness. Anyway, take care, guys. Cheers.